Hello everyone, this is Urvashi Chauhan and you are watching Courts Today by Live Law. We bring you the latest and in-depth legal coverage. Here is a brief of what all happened in the Indian courts today. In an important update, the Supreme Court has today issued a categorical direction to the union government and all state governments to ensure the complete eradication of the practice of manual scavenging. Manual scavenging is the unsafe and demeaning practice of cleaning human excreta and sewage manually. The prohibition of employment as manual scavengers and their Rehabilitation Act of 2013 criminalizes engagement of individuals in the practice. It mandates identification, rehabilitation and financial support for manual scavengers along with strict penalties for non-compliance. Despite legal bans, it persists mainly affecting marginalized communities and eradication remains a significant societal challenge. The Supreme Court bench comprising Justices S. Ravindra Bhatt and Arvind Kumar was pronouncing judgment in a PIL filed against the employment of manual scavengers. The court has directed that the compensation in cases of sewer deaths must be increased to 30 lakh rupees. In case of permanent disablement, Arising from sewer operations, it directed an increase of compensation to 20 lakhs and for other forms of disablement, the compensation must not be less than 10 lakhs. The bench also directed active measures for rehabilitation of the victims and their families, ensuring scholarships and other skill programs. The bench also issued a slew of 14 directions to the union and state government for effective implementation of the 2013 legislation. Justice delayed is justice denied. India's judicial system has long been plagued by a backlog of cases resulting in delayed verdicts and prolonged legal proceedings. This delay often denies citizens their right to timely and fair resolution of disputes. Expressing serious concerns at the pendency of cases, the Supreme Court has issued a slew of directions to ensure the speedy disposal of cases. A bench comprising Justices S. Ravindra Bhatt and Arvind Kumar issued these while delivering judgment in a civil appeal. The litigation in the matter had started in the trial court in 1982 and had dragged on for 43 years now. The bench then issued 11 directions to the High Court for ensuring speedy trial and to monitor the disposal of cases, especially those pending for over five years. The bench said that it had noted countrywide statistics of pendency from the national judicial data grid and said that joint efforts were needed from bar and the bench to address the issue. And now an update on the plea filed by Chandra Babu Naidu for anticipatory bail in the Fibernet scam case. Naidu is Telugu Desam Party president and former chief minister of Andhra Pradesh. He has been accused of playing a key role in the Andhra Pradesh fiber net scam that happened during the TDP term in the state. He has filed an SLP before the Supreme Court challenging an order of Andhra Pradesh High Court which refused to grant him anticipatory bail. Last week, the court had deferred hearing in the matter to 17th October and had also asked the state to not arrest him till then. On 17th, another case relating to Naidu's arrest in the skill development case was heard by the court, but due to paucity of time, it could not hear the Fibernet scam case. Today, the bench of Justices Aniruddh Bose and Bela M. Trivedi heard the same. The matter was today adjourned to 9th November in view of the judgment in the skill development case that is yet to be pronounced. Also, the interim arrangement against any coercive action will continue. That is, Naidu will not be arrested till the next date of hearing. The Supreme Court dismissed a plea by a Lucknow-based lawyer advocate Ashok Pandey challenging restoration of Nationalist Congress Party leader Mohammad Faisal's Lok Sabha membership. Faisal, who was convicted and sentenced for attempted murder in January this year, had lost his Lok Sabha mm -hmm. membership. Against his sentence, he approached the Kerala High Court, which suspended the conviction and sentence imposed on him. This order was further challenged before the Supreme Court. Earlier this month, the Supreme Court allowed him to continue as Member of Parliament representing Lakshwadi. 
In the present petition, the petitioner advocate Pandey contended that once a member of parliament loses their office due to conviction in a criminal case, they will continue to be disqualified until their acquittal by a higher court. A bench of justices B. R. Gawai, Arvind Kumar and Prashant Kumar Mishra today dismissed the PIL petition. Not only this, the court also imposed an extraordinary cost of 1 lakh on him for filing the PIL. Let me also tell you, last week a bench led by the CGI had imposed a cost of 5 lakhs on Advocate Pandey for filing a petition contending that the oath taken by Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court was invalid as he did not use the word I. After serving the legal community and the citizens for several decades, Justice S. Ravindra Bhatt officially retires today. As part of tradition, every Supreme Court judge on the day of their retirement sits in court number one with the Chief Justice of India. However, the ceremonial bench for Justice Ravindra Bhatt sat in court number two as a CGI was not available today. Justice Bhatt was appointed as judge of Delhi High Court in 2004. Chief Justice of Rajasthan High Court in 2019 and took oath as Supreme Court Judge also in 2019. He had a tenure of four years and four months in the Supreme Court. As Judge, Justice Bhatt has authored 122 judgments and was a part of 433 more delivered by others. Among his remarkable judgments, the recent judgment in the same-sex case is the most leading judgment wherein he has authored the judgment for the majority and held that constitution does not recognize the right to marriage as a fundamental right. In another update, Popular Front of India, also known as PFI, has approached the Supreme Court against a Home Ministry notification designating it and its affiliated organizations as unlawful associations. Last year in September, the Ministry of Home Affairs published a Gazette notification declaring the PFI along with its various associates as unlawful associations under UAPA, citing their alleged connections with terrorist organizations and involvement in acts of terror. This development came post two massive nationwide search, detain and arrest operations against PFI and its members. The ban was to be effective immediately for a period of five years. Further, in March this year, a UAPA tribunal led by Justice Dinesh Kumar Sharma of the Delhi High Court upheld the central government's ban. Now, the PFI has approached the Supreme Court in an SLP against the tribunal's order. A bench of Justices Anirudh Bose and Bela M. Trivedi was to hear the matter today. However, the hearing has been deferred for now in terms of a letter seeking adjournment. The next update is from the District Consumer Disputes Redressal Commission, Sirsa Bench, which has held Indigo Airlines liable for the luggage which went missing when the complainant in this case and his son were travelling with the airline. Bhupender Singh, the complainant, booked a ticket for himself and his son with Indigo Airlines. On the day of the flight, his son was denied boarding due to the claim that the flight was already full and was asked to take the next available flight. This action led to additional charges for the complainant's son. Moreover, during the journey, the son's luggage went missing, which contained valuable items including an iPad. Aggrieved, the complainant filed a consumer complaint. He argued that his son faced significant inconvenience and financial losses, that the airline had failed to locate and return the missing bag despite repeated inquiries and attempts. He sought compensation for the loss and for the harassment and mental distress caused to his son. The district commission held that Indigo in this case was liable for the loss of the bag and the associated inconvenience suffered by the complainant's son. Accordingly, the Commission has awarded a compensation of 50,000 rupees for the loss of the bag with 6% interest per annum commencing from the date when the bag went missing. He has also been granted additional compensation of 50,000 rupees for the emotional distress and inconvenience suffered. The Supreme Court today issued notice on a plea challenging the constitutionality of the recent amendments to the Forest Conservation Act. 
The former civil servants who are the petitioners have inter alia argued that the amendments allow for exemptions of various projects and activities in forest lands potentially serving commercial interests at the expense of the broader public welfare. They have said that the amendment represents a complete dereliction of duty imposed on the state to protect and improve the environment. A bench of Justices B.R. Gawai, Arvind Kumar and Prashant Kumar Mishra today heard the matter and issued notice. The Delhi High Court has today dismissed the plea moved by Aam Admi Party MP Sanjay Singh challenging his arrest and remand in the money laundering case related to the liquor policy scam. Singh is the third AAP leader to be arrested in the matter. Justice Swarnakant Sharma denied relief to Singh and said that though Singh is a political figure, he has to be placed on an equal footing as any other accused in a criminal case. Though every person has a right to protect public image, however, upholding that right cannot be in the way of right of state to investigate a crime. Furthermore, the court also said that the petition was premature at this stage and the investigation was still to take place. So, there was no reason to interfere with the order of remand or the arrest. And lastly, the Kerala High Court has reiterated that Section 499 of IPC makes defamation against individuals as a punishable offence and not against criticism of any product or service. The court noted that the provision details with harm to reputation caused to any person and not to product. The allegation was that the respondent had posted a defamatory content against the complainant on a Facebook page. It was alleged that the Facebook post was made to tarnish the reputation and goodwill of the complainant's motor form. The additional Chief Judicial Magistrate Ernakulam held that there was no sufficient ground to proceed with the complaint and had dismissed it. Against this order, the complainant had approached the High Court. Justice N. Nagaresh observed that criticism of a product or service could not be considered to be imputation of reputation to be punishable as a defamatory under the IPC. Thank you for joining us. If you wish to know more details about the cases I've mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.